शो मित्र शरुण शो भवत्म शन्न इंद्रो बृहस्पति शो विष्णुरुक्रम नमो ब्रह्मणे नमस्ते वायो वायुमेव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी मेव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्म वदिष्या व्रत वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत तद्वक्तावत अवत मवत वक्ता ओ शातिशाशाति ओं सहनावत सहनौ भुन सह वीकवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तु मिद्विषा वह We are looking at the objection. There are two, maybe two and a half, <laughs> or even three. We'll see. Objections. Objection to what? What is the objection to that? We have to understand first. Asti Brahma. Nava, whether Brahman is there or not. So here, what was established was that Brahman is there. How was it established by Shruti Vakya Sah Akamayat? This being, conscious being, in the form of Ishvara, Brahman as Ishvara Akamayat desired. So this conscious being. Desired and created this universe and is non-separate even now. Asti iti upalabhyate is available as is 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 is. What is is Ishvara? What is is Ishvara? And so this is what we were taught. There are people who are troublemakers, <laughs> for lack of a better word. <laughs> they can't you know there is no shraddha and if there is no shraddha then all kinds of thoughts come to the mind it becomes a uh, what is that called like a factory objection factory purva paksha factory okay where uh, branded purva paksha is made every single day there is purva paksha being generated and so this is how the this is how it becomes very sad but true because there is no shraddha you see this is why shraddha is very important because towards the shruti if there is no shraddha then where where is the person to go then a hundred shrutis can come and establish the uh, existence of brahman and still there is no uh, nothing happens the person is unchanged so in those days there were two three varieties of people who had to be um, what is that who had to be contented with what was the first one that will come later okay yeah shunyavadi yes definitely first one was called nayayika the logician wants to make everything logical you saw how he constructed the uh, question yesterday wanting to make everything logical and what does he say the cause of the universe is not i mean I, i'm not going to go into nayayika vaisheshika uh, uh, you know matas darshanas because that's not important what's important is just to understand the bare bones of where they come from for the sake of refuting them that's all no other is so therefore what is there so this nayayika this nyaya means everything has to be logical they try to establish ishvara also logically so they say that it is the cause of the universe is not a conscious being what is it paramanu atom <laughs> and 
and they say they are very scientific and the science people also love the nayayikas foolish because it's foolish to compare science to vedanta veda veda and science have nothing to do with one another because they are two different pramanas science is based for an inference and veda veda is its own pramana including veda veda vedanta is its own pramana and so therefore there is no uh, no basis for this at all but still this fellow nurses some thoughts and what does the the nayayika say nayayika says everything came from paramanu some kind of an atom but then what we say is where did the atom come from <laughs> you can you can put the cause on atom then where did the atom come from we ask is atom satyam gnanam anantam then we have no problem with you you call it atom we call it brahma you call it potato <laughs> tomato we call it tomato so no problem but that's not what they say paramanu is not conscious it is not chit it is not gnanam it is not satyam either because that also that existence is questionable because it came into being and then uh, how did it come to being it came into being after negating what was there before it and then he, he, when it goes away something else will come this is what it is everything is like a spark of consciousness this is vaisheshika nayayika very mixed up people very sad brilliant people but sadly mixed up and sadly i don't know miss uh, misled totally misled and so that fellow has some pressure that purva pakshi following the nayayika mata has some pressure to put forward anything other than brahman as the cause of the universe paramanu is the cause of the universe why that is his pet thing he wants to put up paramanu and then we have another fellow what is that sankhya and there are two varieties of this sankhya one is seshwara saishwara sankhya they they believe in ishvara they are all vaidikas in a, in a way they are not outside the vedas but they distort the vedas to make it their own thing so another one says there is no ishvara and so what is that we say everything has come from pradhanam what is pradhanam their version of paramanu <laughs> <laughs> that is all pradhanam is just a name so is pradhanam satyam gnanam anantam then if that is so we have nothing to talk to you about because that's what it is and you we you you call it brahman you you we we call it brahman you call it pradhanam no problem that's not what they say it's not satyam it is not gnanam and so what is it it is jada jada means what inert so out of pradhanam you also have come yes <laughs> how to swallow this with a straight face tell me and so without naming the purva pakshis the, these are the two strains of people that he is dealing with in the first part of this purva paksha then in the second part of the purva paksha he is dealing with the third fellow shunyavadi the one who says everything that that one also has the head turned on backwards because what does he say he says everything came out of nothing and this is this this these are the three the shunyavadi is a kind of a variety of buddhist people who are uh, um, supportive of vedanta sometimes they like to say vedanta is just like buddhism but they have some hidden agenda ah vedanta is not just like buddhism un- unless you're talking of zen which says uh, or dao you know 
which says everything is empty of attributes. We also say that, then we don't have a problem. We also say that the truth of this world is empty of name and form. Yes. So that's what we say. And if your shunya means the same thing, we have no problem. But sometimes what happens is that Buddhism is justified to be just like Vedanta from a uh, number of people, even though that uh, the, the concept of Shunya is not the same as Brahman. If everything has come from nothing, how can something come from nothing? What can come from nothing? Nothing. And yesterday we saw the argument, the effect has the stamping, the marking of the cause. The marking of the cause is in the effect. Like cotton, cotton yarn, cotton thread, fibers, cotton thread, and then cotton cloth. The whole way it is cotton. It's not like you took the cotton buds from the tree, you picked them and you cleaned them, combed them to make uh, fibers and then you made the thread either by hand like Gandhiji used to do <laughs> or you put it in the mill and made the thread and then you wove the thread this way, that way, this way and that way and then made it into cloth. So by the time it became cloth, it became polyester. <laughs> Is that possible? No. The effect inheres in the cause. The effect is inherent in the, co the cause. The cause, sorry, the other way around. The cause is inherent in the effect. Cause is unmanifest. Effect is manifest. Cause is amorphous, not diverse. Effect is diverse. Out of one thing, many things can, can come. Out of that same thread, you can have, uh, you can, uh, out of that same cotton, you can have thread, you can have various kinds of cotton fabric, some brushed cotton, and then mercedized cotton, Egyptian cotton, thousand counts, means there should be in one square inch, thousand threads. Mm, that's what it is, thousand count, very soft bed sheet, like this. The more the count of, uh, the warp and the woof, woof, uh, you know, because it makes that woof, woof sound it used to in the beginning of the revolution. So warp and woof, I forget which goes in which direction, but there are threads like this and threads like this. And in one square inch, this many threads should be there. That's when you can say 100 count, 1000 count, whatever it is. That means it's very dense cloth and soft cloth. It's not like a jali, like a little <laughs> transparent netting. So this is the, uh, you know, this, 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 this will yield what? Cotton will yield cotton cloth only. Various kinds of cotton maybe. Brushed cotton, mercedized cotton, Egyptian cotton, this kind of a cotton. But it will not suddenly become nylon. After going through the weaving process, ayo, how did it become nylon? Nobody asks. Nobody is going to ask how it became nylon. It won't become nylon because the, the, the effect uh, and the cause, they are connected as though. How are they connected? The cause leaves its imprint on the effect. This we have seen, Drishtam Loke, in the world we have seen that. The baby looks like the mother and the father. And then out of uh, gold, when you, when you craft an ornament, what happens? Shines. Like what? Like the gold. The ornament shines. The shine of the ornament belongs to the gold. So the cause has imprinted itself upon that. So the shine doesn't belong to the ornament. The shine belongs to the gold. So like this, you have seen in the world. But still, this, this confused Purva Pakshi is, keeps saying, Nasti Brahma will bring in anything but don't want Brahman because there is some kind of an Ishvara allergy. If you say Ishvara, the person breaks out in pimples. And if you say Brahman, 
or something, they break out. If you say guru also, they break out in hives. Guru allergy, Ishvara allergy. So, then what? That's why the response is na nasti brahma, double negative. Tanna, not at all, Mahashakara says. And then he says na nasti brahma. Why? Kasmat. Akashadihi sarvam karyam brahmanaha jatam grihyate. Very beautiful it is. So you see the five elements. You can see them, you can, you can objectify them. Space is difficult to objectify, but you can objectify them. So then, na nastip brahma. That means what? Astip brahma. You know? But then why don't you say straight away asti brahma? Why do you have to say na nasti brahma? <laughs> because you have to negate the nastita. <laughs> that nastitvam, that, uh, that nastiness. <laughs> that nastiness has to be negated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nastiness. And you see, Bhagavan only gives all these puns. <laughs> and nasty, when you say Brahma nasty, it is a nasty argument. <laughs> so this nastiness has to be negated. So therefore, na, na nasty Brahma. <laughs> Your argument is na nasty. Brahman is not nasty. <laughs> Yeah, because if you ask a Westerner to say nasty, nasty, they will say nasty. <laughs> so, so, na nasty Brahma, asti eva. <laughs> Brahman is, it is, it exists. So therefore, you have to negate that fellow's conclusion, which is what? Asad Brahma, that's the conclusion. And so therefore, Nasna asti brahma. And so, to negate that conclusion, what do you say? Nanasti brahma. Nanasti brahma means what? Asti brahma. Kasmat, kasmat. Kasmat he toho. Which reason are you giving? Akashadihi, he, yasmat. Because Akashadihi sarvam karyam brahmanaha jatam grihyate. From starting with Akasha, all these karya effects we see and then it is prasiddham loke. It is well known, unlike your stupid paramano <laughs> and your pradhanam with a few adherents. Okay? And it's so complicated, your philosophies are so complicated, they don't adhere to the brain at all. It makes no sense. The person who wants to say everything is so logical, uh, you, you know, is not logical at all. What is destruction of, what is the non-existence of Ghatta? If you ask, well, that means Ghatta is not there. That's what we will say. Maybe it broke. Maybe somebody took it. It's not here. Simple. No, no, no. There are four kinds of non-existence. Ayyayo. <laughs> One non-existence is itself enough to contend with. These fellows come up with four no the kinds of non-existence. The first non-existence is the non-existence of the part of the last second before the pot was created. That's a particular kind of non-existence. All right, whatever. Then what's the other kind? <laughs> You'll be sorry you asked, okay? Yeah. <laughs> the other kind of non-existence is the last, uh, is the last moment after the, no, the first moment after the pot was destroyed. Yeah. Ghatasya nashasya charamakshanaha prathamakshanaha. And then this side, ghatasya, you know, the ghatasya, the agama, agamasya ghatasya, 
Prathamaksha, Charamakshana. So the non-existence, the last minute of the non-existence of the pot before it came and the first minute of the non-existence of the pot after it left this, this earth is two, are two different kinds of non-existence. Then you have another kind of a non-existence which is called Atyanta Abhava, a, a, an extreme non-existence. And what is this extreme non-existence? Like the horns of the rabbit, uh, not there at all. Then you have Anyonya Abhava. Anyonya Abhava means mutual non-existence. That one thing negates the other thing and that thing also negates this thing. Now, this is truly a head-scratching moment because if each one is negating the other, then that means both are non-existent, correct? And if both are non-existent, what does it matter if they are leaning on another, one another? Two people who are the greatest friends are embracing one another. Look, look, where are they? <laughs> both are non-existent. Vandhya Putra number one is embracing Vandhya Putrasya Putra. <laughs> Putrasya Putra means Vandhya Putra, the child, the son of a non existent woman. Okay? As good as non existent because she is not able to have children. So she is, you know, so the non existent son of a woman who cannot bear children is embracing the grandson of a non-existent son of a woman who cannot bear children. This is called Anyonya Abhava. I mean, this is just, you just want to, you know, scratch your head. You'll never understand this. And they are supposed to be logicians. There's nothing logical about it. We don't say we are, it is logic. Logic is, is a pramana. Inference and all is a pramana. Arthapati, inference, that's what logic deals with. We don't say we are logical. We say we have our own pramana. And in fact, this pramana is beyond logic. So these kinds of logicians. And then the one who says, Pradhana creates. How does Pradhana create? It is jada. If it is jada, then what? If it is jada, then what? How can it create? Can something that, you know, creative principle means it should be alive. That which is creating should be alive. Then if it created, then it created all the trees and the earth and everything. So whatever has come out of it must be jada. But we don't see that. We see uh, chaitana. We see everything is conscious regardless of this is regardless of whether it has sukshma sharira to broadcast that consciousness. But everything is satyam jnana manantam grihyate. And so whatever we accept as karya, karya means effect. Then we see that uh, brahmanaha sakashat uh, jatam. It has come from brahman. Asti iti grihyate. Asti asti alone. Upalabhyate. Asti iti upalabhyate. So, because it has come from Brahman, what? Akasha. Akasha cannot be born of, you know, Pradhanam or Paramanu or something like that. Why? Because Shruti says so. That's all we need to say. We don't need to give any other reason. Because we have accepted Shruti as a way of knowledge. No, but I don't accept. That's your problem. Not mine. <laughs> if you don't accept, then this is not for you. Go pedal in Pradhana, go pedal in, uh, what's that other one, you know, Paramanu. Go pedal some more Paramanu and confuse a few more people. Maybe that is your karma in this life. <laughs> to make people ready for Vedanta, after that they come running to Brahman because they are sick of this kind of a mixed up philosophy. No. Brahmanaha Jatam. So you see how even without saying where this objection is coming from, Bhashyakara slowly takes down Sankhya, Nayayika Vaisheshika and also this Shunyavadi. All three of them are happily taken down. And so then what? Then 
So therefore, we have to understand. You have to understand that everything has come from Brahman, either directly or indirectly. So you say you say that uh, you know there are certain things that have come, and then certain changes have taken place in this so-called coming to form from what? That Brahman which is nameless, formless, attributeless. From that, things which have form have come. Some Parinama has taken place. But Brahma is not a Parinami Karanam. Parinama means change. So Brahman is not a cause that changes. So what do we do? We bring in Maya, Prakriti. That is the Parinami Karana. Maya is the one that produces the changes, undergoes certain changes, because of which all the Nama Rupas undergo certain changes. Brahman is not undergoing any change. So therefore, even though we call one element Akasha, another element Vayu, etc., all of them are Brahmanaha Jatam Grihyate. Natu Paramanoho, Natu Pradhanath. Not from Pradhana. And so, so therefore, the um, you know this this is the this is the philosophy here. The Maya here is not separate from Brahman. Maya later on it will be talked about is Kalpita Shakti, and as though power that that goes and um, manifests as the law, raw material, and Maya is herself is unmanifest, but then. She gives birth to all these names and forms, so to speak, but the names and forms are not away from Brahman. Why? Because Maya is never away from Brahman. Maya is not away from Brahman, so the names and forms are not away from Brahman. And as the Shruti Vakya, we will see, we have just chanted it. So, Saha Akamayata, Idagam Sarvam Asrijata, Idagam Sarvam Abhavat. It becomes, so quote unquote, becomes everything without really undergoing any becoming process. And so then, um, so then uh, the, 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 from Brahman everything has come. There is the Brahma Sutra also. Ikshatehe na ashabdam karanam. Ikshatehe, Iksh, uh, you know, aikshata. In, in another Shruti, here, Saha Akamayata. In another Shruti, Tad Aikshata. That Brahman, Tad means Brahman, even though it is neuter, it is sentient. So, neuter grammatically, but sentient. So, this sentient Brahman, Aikshata, sees. Sees means plans. <laughs> You know, just like Satapo Tapyata, Saha Akamayata, here Aikshata. So that Shruti Vakya is taken and made into a Brahma Sutra. Ikshate he na ashabdam karanam. Ashabdam means ashrutam, no, unheard. So you can't have, it is not, it is unheard by the Shruti. Where does Shruti say pradhanam, karanam? Nowhere. So it is ashabdam. These kinds of nonsense cannot be there. Paramanu, does Shruti ever say the word Paramanu? The answer is no. You don't say, oh, I haven't read the Shruti, so I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Take the word for it, no. Nowhere it is said, Paramanu, at atomic, atomic origins of the universe. Nowhere does it say. Pradhana is the cause. Nowhere does it say. Shastra doesn't say. What does it say is the Karanam Brahma? Brahmaiva, so why are you, why are you going anywhere else? First we have to understand the Shastrik point of view and then we can beat these people with their own stick afterwards. <laughs> that is the best way of attacking. First we establish the Pramanya of the Shruti and the status of having the Pramana and then we say what? This cannot be Karana, that cannot be Karana, Brahman alone is Karana, what is said by the Shruti only will hold, no, not what you, you say just because you, you did not get sleep at night and you wanted to write something. <laughs> Head was working over time. And so, 
any fr so from from something that is something is born and we see this in the world we see this in the world so first is shruti pramana and then we see all these things are born so then we know that it cannot be now we are getting to the third argument non existence so when we see something is born like akasha is a karya it is born vayu is karya and then apaha prithivi all these five elements are what karya so the karya is born so when you say the karya is born then you cannot at in the same breath say that the karya it is born of non existence what comes out of non existence non existence <laughs> and whether you define there are four kinds of non existence or you can have 10 kinds of non existence but non existence is not capable of birthing anything other than confusion in your head that it is capable of birthing if non existence ever birthed anything it is <laughs> it is giving you a big head full of sawdust that is all bhusa it is called in hindi <laughs> that's all it is that is that is what it is and so therefore here this is something which is the, this is the shunyavadi being taken down by the same argument so you cannot say that there is the you cannot say vandhya putra that itself is non existence and then you cannot say vandhya putra either grandson of vandhya putra <laughs> grandson of vandhya because when the putra itself is not there then where will the putra come so then therefore he points out that yatha just as ghata ankuradi karanam mrid bijadi so like the cause of the pot and the cause of the sapling ankura ankura means sapling the small just sprouted it may have two three leaves that's all so the sapling the cause of the sapling ankura and the cause of the pot respectively are what seed and clay clay and seed and so then we so the ghata is a karya and then it is created by who you can't say brahman okay it's created by the potter but the potter is becomes just the nimitta an instrument so either ishvara directly creates or equips the bird to make a nest and the bird makes a wonderful nest uh, equips the beaver to make a dam and teach human beings how to how to how to make a dam and but it is that ishvara tatva alone that ishvara only through these various uh, uh, beings which are all created you know these these the, that is ishvara only the name and form the upadhi for the beings is created by ishvara is the, the that upadhi becomes the uh, becomes the place of operation of various things so human being created the pot all right but then it came from clay created directly by ishvara <laughs> out of that clay pot has come so either directly or indirectly so brahman out of atma brahman brahmatma akasha came but then out of akasha vayu came so you can do you know indirectly or directly so then uh, it is uh, it is not uh, you know it is not a human creation because the human body it's a, is itself is a creation the body in which you live is a creation and so the mind in which you live is also a creation and so therefore the mind in which you live is blessed by ishvara to further create that's what it is okay and then um and then so what so therefore the uh, this karya karana is a very good uh, what is that pedagogy karya karana prakriya because it brings in ishvara amazing you can't bring in ishvara any other uh, methodology avasthatraya again it is what tvam pada vichara avasthatraya is tvam pada vichara and then you you bring in any other methodology also but here the most effective way is karya karana prakriya karya non separate from karana it is established karana separate from karya karana has not become karya we can say so this is what we see drishtam loke 
you know that from that is 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 something was some the something is from that is only everything is born we borrow the isness just like the clay the the pot borrows the clay for its existence the pot borrows the clay and then therefore mrit bija etc um, because of that we have um, you know e each one has a cause that can be identified so akashaadi karanatvat asti brahma because akasha etc being the cause of akasha there is brahman uh, brahman does exist this is the thing and then brahman is everything and and then what so therefore your your shunya cannot have anything here why not why can't you say something is born out of nothing something is born and to illustrate this pujya swami ji used to uh, tell one uh, story here in uh, which was enacted in rishikesh itself this was in the 70s poor innocent sadhus living in various ashrams one mischief maker came and said they are distributing lovely bed sheets at this place kali kambli wala lovely bed sheets are being distributed run run go 3 o'clock in the afternoon they are giving go get your bed sheet and if you ask nicely maybe they'll even give two so if you go early just go stand in line get the bed sheet and come prankster it was april 1st and sadhus don't know april 1st you know what will they they will say it is saptami today is amavasya meaning it is no moon day or it is purnima full moon day so nobody is going to think april 1st it is panchami shashti all these things will be there so therefore they all went and lined up no bed sheet was to be had neither bed nor sheet was given <laughs> so then they came back very upset in fact pujya swami ji says he too was invited but he already had two bed sheets so he said i don't need so i'm not going to go and then they came back and they were very angry with him because they thought he was also in on the joke that's why he, <laughs> he didn't <laughs> he was also in on the prank that's why you didn't go you you allowed us to go he and pujya swami ji yes, said i had no idea i didn't go because i already had bed sheets and i didn't want any bed sheets so i didn't go i didn't need any bed sheet therefore i did not go and so therefore what so therefore they they uh, something has been born out of nothing what has been what, what what was not what is the nothing here bed sheet no bed sheet but something was born what was born the lining up of the sadhus took place <laughs> correct the lining up of the sadhus took place so action was born some action was born okay a thing was not born a concrete thing was not born out of nothing but here out of the no bed sheet still the 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 the, the non existent bed sheet made the sadhus assemble <laughs> and stand in line correct and the non existent bed sheet caused a change in the temperament of the sadhus who were just not very happy with this joke <laughs> they were not very happy with this prank because instead of meditating or doing whatever they were doing at 3 o'clock they had to go stand in the sun and stand in line only to be fooled and come came back so out of non existence you see so many actions took place and so many states of mind took place why not argue like that well the pravritti did not happen out of the non existent bed sheet the pravritti meaning the actions of the sadhus ensued because of the shabda the words of an existent person ah <laughs> do you see this do you see the difference here it's the existent person who came and said 
It was not Vandhya Putra who came and said they are, they are giving bed sheets. It was not Vandhya Putra. Uh, Vandhya Putra means well, what is that? You know, the non existent fellow of a woman, born of a woman who cannot bear children. Or Vandhya Pautra, his son, <laughs> the son of the son of a non existent person, did not come and tell there are bed sheets to be had. An existent person alone came and said, So there goes your Shunya Vada, Tata, <laughs> you have to say. Tata, bye bye. So he used to give this, you know, some of his Rishikesh stories are unforg unforgettable. And the example, I mean, what an example, what an illustration, it's just amazing. And then, so and then he says, um, uh, the Shruti now says, uh, sorry, not the Shruti, Bhashya says, Na cha asataha jatam kinchit grihyate loke karyam. <laughs> right? So the non-existent bedsheet, you cannot say, directly produced action. What produced action was the words of an existent person who was talking about non-existent bedsheet, that's okay. But the non-existent bedsheet, being non-existent, cannot produce action. Because how can the non-existent bedsheet come and tell a non-existent sadhu in every ashram that come and get me, I am in, I am in this particular ashram, I am being given away. It did not come and say. So there goes your argument. Nacha, further, nacha asataha jatam. Means something born of asat means non-existence. Kinchit grihyate loke karyam. There is no effect of asat. Asat does not produce an effect. In fact, asat cannot produce anything. Asat cannot produce anything. And I, you know, so asatash chet namarupadi asataha chet namarupadi karyam niratma katvat na upalabhyate na upalabhyeta so, asataha chet. Suppose you say, chet means if. Suppose. Suppose you say, asataha namarupa adhikaryam. From asat, all these namarupas are born. <laughs> I don't know how people can say it with a straight face. But this is certain, uh, you know, certain uh, strains of Buddhism. And certain strains of Buddhism do uh, subscribe to this philosophy, this theology, because they feel comfortable with this. Why? I already told you, what is this? Ishvara allergy. <laughs> already told you. Because of Ishvara allergy. It's much nicer to say everything is mithya, 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 mithya. They don't say mithya, mitya, mitya. It's like M I C H Y A. It's so the th thia becomes chia somehow. Mitya. And so it's not, you know, everything is mitya. Okay, everything is mitya, fine. But what is that which upholds all these appearances? All these names and forms. Everything is an appearance. Okay. What is behind the appearance? Nothing. How can there be nothing? <laughs> it's mithya. It is a philosophy which has mithya and they use it uh, every day. The word, at every shake of the head, they use the word mithya. And then it is a mithya without satyam. There is no satyam. What is the truth of the word? Non existence, shunya. Shunya is satyam. If shu, how can shu, <laughs> how can shunya, non-existence, be satyam? It cannot. Satyam means existent. So the, how can non-existent be existent? It cannot. Non-existence cannot be existent because it is non-existent. And non-existence and existence are what? Mutually exclusive. Just like saying the light darkness or the dark lightness you can't say that it's either dark or it's light certain things are like that there is no compromise happening and there is no compromise possible and there is no compromise desirable either 
it goes against every grain of logic speaking of logic <laughs> so it can't the shruti cannot go against logic it can be beyond logic but it must respect all other pramanas and so here with a straight face you say that out of non existence existence came how can it come how can it come no uh, uh, non existence is the only existence <laughs> you're contradicting yourself so anything that is born of asat suppose you say i mean not that anything can be born of non existence why because it is non existent you don't need any other logic because it is non existent no and nothing can be born of non existence all right but suppose you want to say this you have been saying that everything is born out of non existence you say the karya the effect of non existence is what we see in the jagat if you say then that is not possible sorry sir why because niratmakatvat na upalabhyate niratmakatvat it has no being it has no being at all so something has come means what from shunyam alone everything has come so whatever has come has no being there is no being there is no you know there is there is the, the person doesn't have satyam and and so cannot say uh, mithya resolves in satyam that's what we say mithya is non separate from satyam mithya is satyam satyam is not mithya this is our contention mithya doesn't mean delusion illusion mithya means dependent reality sat asadbhyam anirvachyam that which cannot be categorically said to exist and categorically said not to exist you cannot say that so this is this is what is uh, is, is mithya for us so this is this is uh, mithya is sat and so if if you say you means the buddhist says jagat jagann is mithya jagat is mithya then what is sat shunya is sat <laughs> then mithya becomes satyam if shunya is sat then mithya becomes satyam then sat adhisthanam is mithya mithya means sat adhisthanam so it must have sat vastu as adhisthana then it's only mithya everything is mithya 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 and so therefore we say that everything is not mithya everything is sat including mithya everything is sat that there is no other thing and that is what is is the addressed here asatas asatah chet nama roopa adi karyam if this nama roopa if the entire jagat is nama roopa it's only mithya if it's born of shunya means it's born of non existence then you know then then that is not a possibility because what will happen niratmakatvat asti iti na upalabhyata therefore you cannot say anything is you i cannot say please you know when i am having lunch i cannot say please pass me the salt because <laughs> there is no such thing as salt it has come from non existent viniratmakatva so it, it will not be seen it will not be pursued by you it is not it is not objectifiable by you because can you objectify non existence na you see how close it is to vedanta philosophy brahman cannot be objectified non existent cannot be objectified you also say mithya we also say mithya and so we are the same we are not the same <laughs> we are not the same because you say at the at the top of everything when when all said and done there is only shunya non existent so out of a non existence non existence can only come so even if nama roopa is possible what kind of a nama roopa it will be non existent nama roopa <laughs> but that's not how it how it is upalabhyata upalabhyate tu jagat upalabhyate asti asti ti upalabhyate ghatah asti this is asti means it it is it is there ghatah sat sat iti upalabhyate sat means is घटसन पटसन मठसन सत 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 इति उपलभ्यते इज 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 
सो इज अलोन इज दे पॉट इज चेयर इज इज नॉट इति न उपलभ्यते इफ आई से चेयर इज नॉट प्लीज सिट ऑन द नॉन एक्सिस्टेंट चेयर थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग टू माई नॉन एक्सिस्टेंट हाउस प्लीज सिट ऑन द नॉन एक्सिस्टेंट चेयर एंड लेट्स हैव सम नॉन एक्सिस्टेंट चाय ओके दिस इज वॉट शून्यवादी टी टी टाइम विल लुक लाइक I suppose I'm just imagining. It's just so mind, you know, really mind-bendingly crazy. It is totally crazy. It because it is not in keeping with the what we see. Table is, we say. Even if you say there is no table, you still say what? There is no table. <laughs> There you are deploying anupalabdhi pramana. You are deploying a pramana called anupalabdhi, and what is the specialty of that? You should know what you are negating and where it is not. So there is no table where in front of me, where in in the room, where on the dais. Is that has to be said? What is not there? Table. You cannot say there is no nothing nowhere. You know the <laughs> that makes no sense. So is alone anuvartate. that the adi is as sat anuvartate uh, is as sat com- comes to all the nama rupas from which all the nama rupa has come the sat has also inhered in the effect so asti 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 iti upalabhyate so we can't say nasti asat ghatah asan ghatah we cannot say because why asat is the cause and so what do you get asat ghatah <laughs> asan ghatah and then what then then uh, then what's the difference between a non existent ghata and a non existent pata pata means piece of cloth what's the difference huh? what's the difference between a non existent pot and a non existent uh, cloth no no difference then that's why no difference because both are what non existent that's why you have to go uh, and uh, go in deep into this some people some philosophers and bring out four kinds of non existences <laughs> okay and but what is the jagat asti 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 iti upalabhyate make a count of how many times in in one hour you use the word is even when you say is it time for me <laughs> to go home even when you say that how many times do you use the word is 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 it is the most used verb asti 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 pot is cat is hat is mat is rat is thought is caught is you keep saying is 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 even when you say is not you are constrained to use the word is is alone is what is qualifies the jagat in fact that is just to say according to our grammar the the is does not you know qualify the, the is 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 in here in the jagat hmm. the jagat qualifies sat as it were <laughs> Ah, the jagat is an alankara, as it were, to sat. Without the jagat, sat still is. Like if you are wearing bangles, and then you remove the bracelets, do you stop existing? No. So just like that. So let's say you remove the jagat from the sat. Remove all the nama rupas. Sat still is. Nama rupas are swallowed up, and then sat still is. and so you cannot say things have come from you know things have come from asat further asataschet karyam grihyamanam api asat anvitam eva syat na cha evam tasmad asti brahma one more thing he says so karananvitam hi karyam meaning the cause in here is the effect anvita anusyota so the karana is 
inhering in the effect. This is the logic. So, when you say asti, something is, then that, you know, so karanena anvitam, so the, the karyam, so the effect is inhering, the, the cause is inhering in the effect. Cotton, we already saw this, cotton, uh, plant, bush, cotton, uh, flower, cotton seed, and then that cotton uh, uh, pods, that's what I was, the word I was looking for was pods. So then cotton pods goes all the way to the cotton cloth. Suddenly it doesn't become polyester or suddenly it is not silk. Silk means you need silk fibers, silk fabric. Then you can have silk salwar kameez. You can't have, suddenly have silk if you don't buy the, the you know, it, if the whole thing has silk. So this is how we see in the world. This is what we see. That the in the karya, the karana has to be present. And that is the way of the world. We see this. So, but if you say, you know, if supposing asatas chet karyam grihyamanam karyam api asat uh, syat. So let's say this Buddhist concept, the extreme, you know, shunyavadi, uh, the, the, that one, from the, the shunyam is born the entire jagat. Supposing the Buddhist is going to say that from the shunya, which is the karana, the whole jagat is born. So the jagat will also have what? The guna, the quality, the attributes of the karana. What is the karana? Shunya. What is the effect? Shunya. So the jagat will be understood as what? Non-existent. Then what is the point of being born? Body is non-existent. Mind is, mind is of course non-existent to think like this. Okay. Yeah. Buddhi, don't even talk, is non-existent. Everything is non-existent starting with Akasha, Vayu, Asat, 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 Asat. Then, then there should be some, there should be something, some vishesha, some unique thing should be there by which Grikhyamana, uh, Grikhyamana because it is, uh, you know, like there is an exclusive feature of Vayu. What? It is connected to the sense of touch. It is objectifiable through touch and through sound. That is its exclusive feature. Touch is its exclusive feature because space and sound is also um, together. So that it is objectified by touch, it is its vishesha, exclusive feature. But if everything is non-existent, what is the exclusivity? The exclusivity is also non-existent. <laughs> Nobody will be, nobody will be able to be discern anything out of this. What a mess, really. And so therefore what? Asti Brahma, Asti Iti, Asti Iti Eva Upalabhyate. You cannot say nasty because then the whole Jagat becomes pointless. Why do we have so many varieties? Then those varieties are imperceptible or they don't matter. Because you keep saying shunya, shunya, even though you are seeing the Nama Rupa with your eyes. What to do? Better end the class. That's all to do. We'll see more next week. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaga Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari hi om.